very young, uh, and uh, he should be humble before the likes of uh, uh, President Emerson Munangagwa. He should be humble before those who have been leaders for a long time in their countries, maybe not necessarily as um, presidents, mm -hmm. but they have grown into their movements, like uh, the president of Namibia. These are people who are seasoned. They were seasoned young leaders growing up to be presidents. For him, he has been bestowed the rare honor of here you come, uh, you are a leader of Zambia. So humility is not one of those attributes that he has. And as such, I look at him as someone who has misplaced self-confidence. At home here, when he is conducting a, a function like a, a discussing the principles of our republic on how we should live, mm -hmm. ask him, where is his elder brother Edgar Chagwalungu? Where is Edith Nawakwe? In the past, and I want to quote uh, not in the immediate past, but in the quite distant past, you would get late President Mwanawasa in his pen, in his signature, sending you a note. Dear sister, leader of a political party, we are having this function. We'll be delighted for you to join us. In this government, you get an invitation if you are lucky filled in by some protocol officers at parliament. You don't even know if you're going to sit in a chair at the back or where. There is no order. Take me, but that is a reflection of where the leader places the other leadership. Today is the leader. Tomorrow I can be the leader. Yes. And, uh, and there's no limit to who amongst us, including you, Mr. Mwemba. You can be a leader tomorrow. When we walk, we should respect each other. But uh, I did mention last time that the way they treated our former president and the way they continue to treat him, it, has, it is as though he's a pariah. There's no recognition that leadership is from God and any one of us can be a leader in this republic. And therefore, those of us who are privileged at a certain point in time must respect those that have gone, those that have passed, and those that are living, and those that are still waiting. But uh, our colleague is not of that mental disposition. Madam he president. is, I am the president, and therefore, he, he watch what I do. And what worries me is that in the region, internationally on the African continent, mm -hmm. We are being alienated as a nation because we are be being seen as a nation who has a boastful leader, absolutely unheard of that a leader should stand up, especially if you are a new person in an organization such as SADC, such as the COMESA, such as the AU. You need to take a back step and observe and watch, but don't address others as if they have just come tomorrow and here you are, it has happened on you, you have the, the monopoly of knowledge on earth. Just on that one, uh, on the international community, Zambia has been seen to be, uh, like the president said, catering back the confidence. Uh, it could be in investors or any other partners. And here on the local scene, in the communities and the Zambian citizen, do not show, or rather do not get to have that feel. Why, why the, the so much difference? On the international community, people may look up to Zambia to say, well, Zambia is making good strides, and Zambians, we ourselves, we cannot see anything of such nature. Why the difference? Oh, well, um, the international community, when you define it, I define my international community as uh, the surrounding states. Right. If I'm in Zimbabwe, what do they say about Zambia? If I'm in South Africa, what do they say about Zambia? On the continent, we don't have, we are not uh, accumulating any respect. 
when you say international, you are talking of America. And uh, we know that uh, America, at different points in time, will choose which side to support. And uh, there is a, a PR campaign in the investor community to grab our resources. And our president is a willing player. He is a hard-nosed international capitalist. He is not a development economist. He is not a, a pro-poor president. Uh, when you say respect internationally, what is your definition, Mr. Mwemba, of international? Do they respect him in China? Do they respect him in Russia? This is a person who has put a curtain between the various blocks and has no understanding of international diplomacy. So the people who are showering with him with accolades mm -hmm. are those who have something to take from him. He is an, an enabler. And I, I quote Mr. Blinken, he says, we are extremely excited to work with uh, President Hika in the Ichilema because he doesn't want the Chinese. And out he comes here. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know what word to use, but naively, he kicks out the Chinese. They packed away from here, the investors, the industrialists, they packed away from here without notice. He just announced, he went to cabinet and said he was cancelling all projects to the tune of $3 billion. If you are constructing Masaiti Dam, you were just told, oh, government has stopped this project. If you were at an international airport, you know, our airport is not completed, mm -hmm. you were told you are leaving. And uh, uh, by the way, that investment is what our people used to get some salaries to be able to put minimum on the table. So when you say at home here, he's not respected. True, because there's hunger, there's poverty, there is absolute despair on the street. You go to the hospitals. And, and you need a presidency that cares for the people. We didn't elect him for the international community. We elected him for our warfare. Right. He is not elected. He's not Washington. He's not Biden. Biden could be outgoing in the next two months. Uh, you know, in the next one week. I mean, do I eat America? No. Uh, the Americans have their life. They have their culture. But uh, when you come here at home, the president has no orientation of his surroundings. And it's, it's quite a tragedy. It's quite a tragedy. And I, 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 I liken him to uh, the leaders in the Bible who don't listen. Uh, this kind of leader is there in the Bible. And uh, uh, I like to quote uh, Ahab in uh, Second Kings. Mm -hmm. He gathers 4,000 prophets. And they all sing the same. Oh, our king... If you go and attack uh, this nation, you're going to win. 400. The majority say we are going to win. And there comes one person who says, you know what? Please don't. And he gets angry and throws Makaya into jail. That's exactly what President Akainde uh, is doing. They are, the Bible is abound with lessons of people who behave in a similar manner and they get destroyed. If you like listening to yourself, I'm good, I'm good, you fail your exam. A clever student is one who practices. It doesn't matter whether you're a genius or not, you still have to wake up and practice. Mm -hmm. But if you think you know it all, you crash the economy the way he has crashed it. We told him very early uh, when he took over that export of maize was going to lead to where we are, hunger, high prices. He followed his path. Now he's blaming the millers that they are saboteurs. That's a language of a person who doesn't destroy, or who doesn't listen, because 
Everything else is because of someone else, except himself. And uh, there is absolutely no way, no way, you expect any business person in this town to to put him on a higher pedestal. Because how on earth would you raise the policy rate today, when in fact the economy is starved of the kwacha? What do you expect? You ex expect exactly what we see. The kwacha is now. 20 kwacha to a dollar. His wish was that it should be five kwacha. He should explain to us why it's not five kwacha. It's not five kwacha because of Edgar Lowe. Well, and we, exp we, we put him in place. We put him in place. You mm -hmm. and I, you people with iPhones, you have to explain to us why you gave us this person. Because you went around and, you know, he's so busy on the Facebook, what, what, his body, Mr. Fix It. And I tell you, man, my brother, this is like a driver starting with a 30-ton truck going to Nakonde without a toolbox. He gets to uh, Serenji, finds that the battery is flat, he can't uh, push anymore, and he stops by the roadside. He says, oh, I don't have spanner number 13. That's a folly. And a, a wise man listens. A foolish man will destroy himself by his pride. Pride destroys people. Let me, let me pick up on, on, on two things, Madam President. You said uh, it's because even of the lack of consultants from you know, the president who's a rookie, in a rookie government. Uh, you speak of yourself and the president, Ed Galongo, but we'll speak on the, his relationship with the uh, former president a little bit later. Let me speak out with you. Prior to the 2021 general elections, I don't know if you shared a very, very good relationship with the current president. You went around campaigning to say he wasn't the best candidate, and uh, there were those court issues you had raised against him. You clearly denounced and clearly called him out to say probably he was going to never rule this country. How do you look if you were on the other side? How would you share the relationship? Well... I, you need to start not from 2021. And uh, these airwaves, sh most of the time, should be spent on what we need to do, mm -hmm. not on the hi histories. But you need to start f before then. 2020, 2005, here comes a young man from the boardroom and says that uh, because of where he hails from, the party which was going to be in alliance with the uh, UNIP, FDD, and UPND, because it comes from southern province, therefore he qualified to take over our late uh, partner. Was, was, and that friend. A was, was that a standard? Y yes, that's, that was what we were told, that UPND was larger. And because and, it and, comes from southern yeah, province? That was what was told to our ears. All right. And, uh, and that uh, within UPND, no other person could take over. And there was uh, the Honorable Sakuiva Skota, the Honorable Bob Schinga, the Honorable Chisanga. There were many vice presidents and leaders in UPND who one would have thought would have taken over. But out springs, no, he was close to Mazoka, and therefore, and therefore, and it took us a lot of time. We only got together 45 days before the elections. And having got together, we then discovered he didn't even care about the partners. How did you get to agree? Oh, well, didn't you believe in his capability? No, I didn't. One, one morning I called him to my residence and said, uh, look, let's go and announce that you are president. That's how it happened. You can ask him. He came to our house and I said, Listen, I called you here after we had tagged for a long. Mm -hmm. And the word I used that So uh, I called him and I said, Comrade, let's go and announce that you are the leader of UDA. And we went to Sheikh Sheikh and announced. From that moment, the, my humiliation started. We had agreed that it was 50 50 seats. Mm -hmm. If you go back to the record, he even wanted to drop people like the Honorable Chifumu Banda State Council for Chasef. He says he won't win. He, won. he became the feudal lord. 
He didn't want to listen to say, colleagues, how do we win? Colleagues, how do we win? We, we exchanged notes with uh, 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 President TJ then, and, and we discovered he wasn't taking us anywhere. Because he couldn't listen, and that's what he has carried off. So when I was saying in the campaign that this man cannot take our country any further than where we are, that he was a wrong person. And uh, you see, the Bible says, be fair. If you're buying land, pay a fair price. Those were the issues that I raised. There were many people, now it has gone quiet in Naminwe, in Kalomo, who cried. And those were the issues, and they were real issues. And when you're going into leadership without resolving those issues, sometimes you don't get blessings. Right. And the blessings are extremely important. We must atone for our sins. If I have sins, I must confess that I have sins and atone for those. So when I said he's not a good leader, what were my issues that he doesn't listen, that he's, he's self-opinionated, mm -hmm. that he likes to feel that he's mightier than anyone else and he's super intelligent. Leadership is not about your mental capacity. Leadership is about your ability to discern. You ask God, God give me the power of discernment so that when you, Mr. Mwemba, tell me something, I must be able to reflect and ask the Lord to go to give me guidance on what to do. So my assessment of his leadership is, is here for people to see. I don't actually see a leader who is bequeathed with the power of discernment, who can unleash the anti-corruption commission on the United Church of Zambia. The United Church of Zambia is our founding church. I am not UCZ, I want to say that. Right. I was brought up UCZ. I was raised UCZ. My parents are UCZ. But when you go back in time, what is the United Church of Zambia? This is a church created by our founding president. That's why I'm saying it's our founding church. Mm -hmm. He united several churches put them together. He realized the president, uh, our late president Kaunda, may he so rest in peace, that the fragmentation of a house of worships in this country, with us coming from colonialism, different tribes, was going to be one source of divisions in the nation. And in his own wisdom, he put churches together and said the United Church of Zambia. This was part of the agenda to create a one Zambia, one nation. Right. And our president, our founding president, dies in the United Church of Zambia. They put him to rest. They honor him. Before he is departed, he's happy to see that a small church he founded with the Zambian people even has synod headquarters. And, uh, you know, I want to say that uh, sometimes when uh, people are facing destruction, strange things happen. Never in our nation would we expect a president who loves his people would send anti-corruption commission to the headquarters of a church. Is he the one that sent them? Oh, with, with that story, obviously getting to look at, uh, there's always been cries, like even from the opposition, for the autonomous of these uh, investigative wings and other government institutions. So if you say, is it really the president that is sending the ACC to go up and about? Already in the news we have um, the Patriot Front uh, member, Ambassador Mwamba, has had his uh, you know, properties restricted because the ACC is carrying out some investigations. No, I want to finish this issue of the United Church of Zambia. Yes. You ask a very pertinent question. Mm -hmm. We were crying for the autonomy yes. of the of the uh, investigative wings. Exactly. Here comes the, the new president, young, vibrant, who's also been a victim of SEC and all this. He then takes the investigative wings and they are housed at his house. In mind you, he has refused to go into state house. So when he says, SEC, we are going to be under my office. 
That's him. He's the boss. There's no one. Let's not escape the fact that he is the one who has directed. Because no young person in their own wisdom would mm. wake up to go to UCZ Synod headquarters and ask for books. They've collected books from the church. And, and tell me, this is a church with four million members. UPND are members of UCZ. They all oh, and sundry, we, we, you know, and you, you are asking them, did Edgar Lungu give you money to construct the church? What does David say in the Bible? He says, my son Solomon, Solomon, sit here. People donate from all corners. They donate cedar. They donate gold. They donate everything to build the house of the Lord. Now, is it normal for someone to think like that? In a speech, I, no, no, I mean, I, I just want to finish. Mm -hmm. Is it normal for SEC to go and best a church purely on suspicion that uh, the former head of state funded UCZ? What else did the President Ed Galung fund? He built a house in a school in Wengwa. Why not go and best that? How many other churches are going to be best? This business of funding churches to help them is a very noble cause because these are the, with the breakdown in values and principles, we need sanctuaries. And uh, this was not started by President Edgar Lungu. My own uh, former boss, President, uh, uh, President Chiluva, mm -hmm. was the initiator of housing churches. Most of them were praying from schools, halls, and there would be conflict. And, you know, the money which was allocated for presidential initiative was allocated to that. And in any case, so what if President Edgar funded the church, contributed? He's not the only contributor. I was involved myself in fundraising for, for the Synod for over 15 years. Every Sunday service for the United Church of Zambia, there was a basket where they said, put even two kwacha, one kwacha, for the construction of the Synod headquarters. How dare he embarrass us as a nation, go to one of our largest churches and go and best them and put the label of corruption in it? We want to ask him, we want to ask him, where did he get the money for building community house? Has anyone asked him? Because I was Minister of Finance. Mm -hmm. When he was a partner at Grand Tonton, he didn't have the amount of wealth that he's wielding now. We begin to see this wealth during privatization. And strategically so, because he was at Grand Tonton, who was a, a, a consult, which was a consulting firm to government. And people were in a privileged position. It's not about education. It's not better than you were the I, Minister of Finance. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when we say, then you say it's malicious. But look, uh, let's, let's face it. Let's face it. People have wealth which they can't explain. Period. And uh, they may be smart. That's the, the, what they are. They are smart. They could have a house, they could have a flat from uh, uh, Rony Antrep Mining Corporation, but it's, it's shrouded in, a, in, a, in, a, in a management assets. That's when they say education is a, an equalizer. You and I, when you get a house, you are Emmanuel Moan, but because you are upfront, you put it in your name. Others will put it in so-and-so estate management company. So you can't best them. You understand that? So this action by President Hagain de Chile, and let's not say it's overzealous uh, SEC. These boys and girls, they can only do what they do with instructions. And uh, he's a president. Sure, every morning gets a briefing from the state security. And they will tell him they are going to UCZ headquarters. As soon as they say, no, want to check if it's Ed Galungu, his heart kicks in, overdrive, go. He doesn't understand that this is a facility, this is a church which gives you Njase, Chipembi, Kafiwe Boys. You know, 
And, and you know, this is the division that our late president KK said, that this man is going to cause divisions in the nation. And it has, it's beginning to pass. Mm -hmm. Because if you are UCZ, you begin to say, and I hope people won't stray that far, and I pray that the division, the unity that this country has had in the church will continue to hold. I pray that they won't start to stray that is because UCZ is not his church. And I pray and I say, no. I've talked to a lot of people. They say, why? Why? We, we also have headquarters. He also goes to a church which has headquarters. I say, no, 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 no. It's not about that. It's about the individual. He has no power of discernment. He has no respect for other people except, except, him, except himself. So this is a tragedy in our nation. And my advice to, to him today is that can you stop? Take all the books you've collected from UCZ headquarters. Mm -hmm. Take them back, my brother. Take them back. Uh, sometimes you have to be able to say the destruction of Ahab was because he couldn't listen. The destruction of Saul was because he was self-conceited and could not listen. Listen, my brother, because your distraction, your destructive behavior can lead to the downfall of a nation. We don't want to have a failed state in this republic because one of us cannot listen to counsel. Madam President, you mentioned on Friday you did not follow up the, you know, the briefing or the address by the president. I did from the very first second to the last. And of those he highly mentioned, especially in corruption, he has singled out to say there will be no sacred cow. Corruption in the past, present, and the future will be fought. Either you're coming from the government or anywhere, it will be fought. Should the church be sacred but or he, an exception? But he, if there's, there's some corruption, but, 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 but tell me, if, if, if a donation to the church to build a sanctuary for God is viewed as corruption. It's perceived you, as a you see, No, no, no. Why not go to the person who has donated? Why not go to, to, to Edgar Chagwalungu, lift the immunity, and bring him before the law? Don't, don't abuse the system. We have said Ministry of Health is stinking corrupt. He's sitting there. We haven't seen any movement. His own people at State House are involved in scams. They come to you and say, you know, there's a case for you. You see, tell me. Uh, there, there is this scheming and this scamming in this government. There is stinking corruption. But if you say it shall not be spared, mm -hmm. are you telling me all of a sudden it's only Edith Nawaki, Edgar Lungu who are corrupt? Are you telling me that's the case? Look, if in the past and in the present, let's see everybody coming before the arms of the law. Let it not be a section of society. And in any case, his agenda of persecuting one section of community is not endearing him to the nation. It has a perception. Politics is about perception. He has created a very viable perception that is only persecuting his opponents. That's all. That's all. So when he says it shall not be spared, mm -hmm. uh, how about himself? Well, there are other political opposition political leaders that are not followed up, uh, even with, within the, you know, the former ruling party. No, Those I mean, former uh, ministers that are not followed up as others. So can't that something mean, mean to say there is something? But where is the convictions? Well, Look, to... he's using it as a card to appear to Biden and the others that is fighting corruption. That's the only agenda. He, came on, he came on on a basis, I'm going to fight corruption. So that's what he's going to pursue. This issue that I'm referring to, and uh, uh, Mr. Mwemba, mm -hmm. please, the issue of United Church of Zambia is a misstep. It's a red line. Let him get out of that place. And if he has ears, let him hear. Let him hear. Because it was not built by a single donation. 
It's over 20 years, and that's the epitome of what a woman can do. At the helm of the United Church of Zambia was one vibrant leader, the former Secretary General, Madam Doctor, the Right Reverend Peggy Kabonde. And she would say, I pray that uh, the church will keep me here until we finish this uh, construction. Mm -hmm. It was a project that was at the heart of the United Church of Zambia. The donations came as far as, I can tell you, wherever there was a congregation, wherever people were poor, they would take maize, they would take uh, millet, they would take beans. Every Sunday for over 15 years, there was an offering basket for the construction of the United Church of Zambia Synod, Synod headquarters. It cannot be belittled and reduced to the fight or, 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 or fight on corruption. It can't. They, they themselves, what are they doing? Look at the Consumers Development Fund. They are queuing up and collecting it back. They send money to Nakonde, then they tell them send back one million kwacha. They are corrupt to the core. All right, Madam President, we have a phone call, and uh, let's just maybe try to engage in the voice of Kafiwa. Good morning. Good morning, kids. How are you? I'm fine. Great. Good morning, Madam President. Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm okay. It's good today you are voting from the Bible, Madam Nawaki. Uh, my, my, my concern is this, Madam Nawaki. As you are voting from the Bible, good examples. Or should I tell you, you call the bad examples of leadership in the Bible? Yeah. My, 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 my concern is this. Look. appreciate Maybe you can quickly run on that. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Yes. Uh, I think what uh, he's saying is very important. Great. This is a president in office. He deserves support. We will support him when he does good. And uh, he says uh, the party has grown. For UPND, they are in office. That is his... Uh, this is the trajectory. Right. We don't know what God has in store for each one of us. I may die never having gone into office of the presidency, but it shall not be taken away from my epitaph that I was a leader in this republic. Mm -hmm. And a leader who pushed the agenda for support to the poor. And that's my issue. That's my issue. Uh, 
when people summarize, uh, like Mr. Kafiwe, whom I don't know the name, so I can't interact with, uh, with Kafiwe town. Is he Mr. Kawe or Monze or what? I he mean, calls himself the voice of Kafiwe. No, I mean, we need to know each other so that we can interact off the set. Right. Yes. I can't just ask you for a phone and say, can I engage in a discussion with Mr. Kafiwe? Uh, but if I know the name, it will be easier for me to say, my brother, let's sit. You understand from where I'm coming from. Mm -hmm. Where I'm coming from is the realization that uh, our leader is a leader for the rich. And that's where my pain comes from. And I shall not depart from that. Because for me, you cannot uh, wake up in one morning and clear off the livelihood from people's tables. Like yesterday, he issued a statement that anyone who is in the drain way, their house must be raised. That's not a leader. My approach would be mm -hmm. find open space somewhere, build houses for them, and redevelop the city. Isn't that the same language, Madam President? No, no, no. Read him. He said, listen. Can you clear all the houses? Just, uh, just raise down the houses which are in the drainway. And mind you, the drainway for Zambia, you have to talk to the engineers. The, the, the hydrology for Lusaka is a very simple one. That's why our first founding president left spaces. You could go from Lusaka South to Nguerele. Mm -hmm. There are big channels. You, it passes through the university. I was MP for... Munali, Munali, and I was involved in clearing the drainage for Kalingalinga. We managed to get the water from Kalingalinga to, to Unza drainage and to, into Ngwerere. You need to sit with the hydrologists and say, hey, comrades, how do we redo this? And it's not a one department issue. It's not one president waking up and say, look, I, this disaster, how do we deal with it? It's a multi sectoral problem. You need the council. You need the buildings department. You need the roads engineer. You need everybody. And you can't go in an area and emotionally say, raise down the houses. What's going to happen to those people? Mm -hmm. Soon maybe the rain will be gone and they will be homeless. And uh, you haven't taken care of the poor. They are in these unplanned settlements because they came to Lusaka to look for jobs. So if you're going to go to Chibodi and say, raise down Chibodi, you're not a leader. You need to provide a solution for renewal. It's called urban renewal. And uh, he, my brother from Kafue, says we enabled him. But uh, you also heard that it was <laughs> These are clever people, they structure the deals behind our backs. And up to today, up to today, I have said on another forum, it is corruption for Aflife to get a contract from Ministry of Mines. Because Aflife is a company founded by the president and his friends, Valentine Chitaru, Munakupia Hantuva, and himself. And uh, with, uh, with Bradford Machira. Mm -hmm. So for him to say, for uh, Mr. Kaguswe to say that Aflife qualified to be fund managers for environmental projects in Minutes of Mines, that is this thinking corruption because Kaguswe is an employee of the president. The PS is an employee of the president. They all know that the president is associated with Aflife. They issued a statement saying yeah. that, uh, no, he resigned in 2019. That's neither here nor there because he's a founder. And therefore, when that money, 35 million, goes to Aflife, it doesn't spread. The proposal from the young people at Ministry of Mines was, let us find different managers. We give them different aspects. Mm -hmm. That way, you share the spoils. But... Uh, here we are. No, I resigned. But he knows that uh, in other companies, he is associated with Munakupa Hantuba and these other people, and uh, they get the profits. So that's corruption. It doesn't have to go to a contribution. I would just like to go back and emphasize the point that he's not a very fervent giver. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, President Lungu was a giver. And uh, so if he can stay with uh, his position that he doesn't give, 
to the church or to different organizations. That's his position. He will go in history as a president who had very deep pockets but short hands. So, but he shouldn't then inconvenience the communities. He shouldn't. How is uh, uh, that person in Mwenimpangala feeling? Who took out a medal of groundnuts to contribute to the construction of the Synod headquarters? How is that person th f f feeding? But this is a president who doesn't take feelings into account. And when you are a leader, emotional intelligence is part of leadership. Mm -hmm. All right. So now you had obviously commented on and the still uh, on the story of uh, the Synod. So the ACC, according to some, you know unconfirmed reports is that they've threatened to seize uh, the UCZ Synod offices. Several anti-corruption commission officers visited the newly constructed United Church of Zambia UCZ Synod offices inquiring about the source of funding and donations received for its construction. The Synod offices are at number 8 Mosotunia Road in Woodlands. The officers uh, from ACC also wanted the books of accounts to establish if former President Edgar Lungu made any donations for the construction of Synod you know, offices. Uh, the building was constructed uh, from funds raised from congregates and organizations from Zambia and uh, Canada. Is it difficult to be able to put across these books and uh, confirm with the officers? But, um, You're already confirming and questioning of his wealth, like how he amassed that wealth. Is it a crime to question how, uh, you know, the building it, it, it appears that, uh, to me, the way I've understood this fight against corruption, it is a crime for a Zambian to own a bicycle. That's all. How so? Yeah, because we have not seen him round up Rwandis. We have not seen him round up Soma, uh, Malians. There are people who came to this country in tropicals. And they've become feudal lords, they own big emerald mines. It's not, as long as you are not a non Zambian, it's okay for you to be rich. Our president is anti wealth creation for Zambians. It sits well with him. Right. That, uh, uh, I mean, look at Mwamba, uh, Emmanuel Mwamba, Ambassador Mwamba. He was a uh, PA to President Shiluba. He was the uh, permanent secretary. For Western Province, deputy permanent secretary. He was the ambassador, and the ambassador gets $10,000 per month. You mean he was sitting in South Africa and Ethiopia chewing $10,000? Uh, you know, it's, it's preposterous that he's living in a house where, as president, he can't explain how, how he funded it. And he thinks that his friends cannot have a house. All right. So, so I, I mean, as politicians, as politicians. Let me just hold your thoughts a bit, Madam President. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. How are you? I'm great, thank you. Tell us your name. Where are you calling us from? My name is Sean. I'm calling you from the capital. Too bad. Uh, it's off, but uh, alternatively, you could use 0973-727395. Alternatively, 0973-727395, maybe, but I'm present if you Yeah, I mean, look, he's obsessed with the fighting Zambians, and when he seizes these assets, if you seize the Synod headquarters, mm -hmm. you're going to auction it. There's no Zambian who will buy it. It will be foreigners. So he wants to transfer assets from Zambians, and these are community assets. A church is a society. It's a community. It's registered under the Soil Societies Act of, of, of Zambia. Now, you, 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 you want to seize these assets, auction them, and transfer them to non-Zambians, because it's only non-Zambians who have cash in this republic. You and I don't have the amount of cash that you would... Maybe has he lined up, like he has said, he has lined up buyers for the, for the presidential plane. Maybe even the Synod headquarters, he has lined them up. But... He, Let's not even discuss it. I think the, the, the advice that I can give to my brother and president, mm -hmm. stop it. This is a misstep. I mean, it's important for the president to come out in the open. And that's not part of his character to apologize. That he, these people, he can use several words. He can say these people did it without his knowledge. 
and you peace, peace, and we go. Right. I think that it's very important. This, this issue should not be escalated beyond today. Uh, there, are, there are church leaders who are sacrificing their life. They are not as well paid as uh, the politicians. Mm -hmm. uh, they, I was saying that uh, 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 Reverend Peg Kabonde is retired with the support of the Synod Bishop, Mr. Schirima, and the other bishops, presbytery bishops, and the church groups, they put together an organization to fundraise, to build the synod. Mm -hmm. And you can't take it away from them. And from there, where is he going? Every other church that has got a university, like SDA has a university in Southern Province, he says, how do, will you build it? These are partners in development. Let him not alienate the United Church of Zambia. Let him not do so, because this is our founding uh, church. This is a pillar of uh, peace in our society, in our community. I beg you, Mr. President, uh, whoever advised you, please, I think it's important today go to the Synod headquarters, talk with the leadership, make peace on our behalf. Some of these are signs of... Um, our times, which should be pointers as to the things not being well in our community. Mm -hmm. Because if wrong things happen, they, on, they happen not in the vacuum. They happen uh, because, uh, you know, God enables even wrong things to happen. And you should be able to say, why is this happening? Why? I mean, is, is the Synod headquarter such a big ma amount of money in the treasury of the Republic of Zambia that the president should go and seize it and auction it to his friends well, who I, have money. Unless you haven't followed him, he said every other coin, if it's a fifteen way, a one quarter, will be able to make sure that if it if it was uh, done dubiously, we need to return well, it back. Well, to, uh, when to you the point a person. finger at your friend, this is, if hand is pointing at you. He should be transparent himself. He has not declared his source of wealth. Well, it's not he should start from... Oh, he's not constitutionally According right. According to a constitution, uh, at uh, least. So he needs a constitution to oblige him to be transparent, to be upright. You don't need a constitution. It's a moral issue. All right, let me pick up this phone call as we engage in our viewers. Hello, good morning. Yes, uh, good morning. Yes, sir. Tell us your name. Where are you calling us from? All right, please proceed, sir. Uh, you see, good morning, Madam Lawrence. Good morning, sir. What was his name? Your name again, sir? Uh, this is Mr. Moyo. Mr. Moyo? Yes. All right, great. Please proceed. Uh, Madam Lawrence, uh, we are very much aware how during the 2021 campaigns, we are, we are, the way you prayed, like, the way you campaigned against the current president. I think he has shown a political will how to fight the corruption. Because the set he appointed uh, from the from Rwampula and the, some of the PNs we have seen and being shown an exit. Now surely are you going to continue uh, you know on the negative part of the president from the way the go, that's what we have known you. That's for one try to help your brother on this. Not every time to be, you know, to be talking about negative things. You've never loved that man who is on that stage. <laughs> you have never loved him. We don't know what happened. That's love. <laughs> All right, Mr. Moore, thank you so much. Maybe we could accommodate more callers. Hello, good morning. <laughs> Hello, good morning. Yes, tell us your name. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Shepard Yamapa, calling from Karomo. All right, Mr. Shepard, please proceed. All right, great. It's a very good program that will bring development in our country. And the TV station, please keep it up. Thank you so much. And to our dear mother, yeah, she's, uh, she's a wise woman. She's a wise mother. She's been in government before. She's said government and she knows what is good for Zambia. But from the way she's talking, you can see that someone is talking out of frustration. Hello? Yes, you're loud and clear. Please conclude. Yeah, she's talking out of frustration. If I remember very well, in 2009, the government of, uh, of that time almost seized 
the property of this event. And it took members to speak to receive the answer. I think myself, when it comes to law, there is no one who is about to read it. The Bible says be subject to the governing authority of that country. All right. Thank you so much, Mr. Shepard. I think uh, let me uh, pick up one more, then you can be able to respond. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Sir. How are you? Great. Thank you. What's your name? This is the Rafael from Mumbwa. Your name again? Rafael. Rafael from Mumbwa. Please, Mr. Rafael, what is your comment? Please, uh, at times you journalists or the media how that you are not playing your role to make sure that. The you bring programs that will bring development to this nation. Otherwise, all the time we are interviewing these people who from the way to go, they have negative perspectives about the current president. So what do you think that they are going to say about HH? This matter we know she has been against HH from the beginning. So after that, has continued. So please, you media outlets, help us, the nation, the people of Zambia to make sure that you interview people with programs which are there to develop the nation, not every time working. All right. We well, appreciate Mr. Raffo. Madam President, allow me to give you now an opportunity uh, to be able to respond to a few comments. Hopefully, you, uh, Mr. Raffo, uh, Mr. Moyo. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, I am very grateful. Uh, he says, uh, Mr. Shepard says, I'm frustrated. I don't love. You don't love the president. Uh, uh, don't love. I'm supposed to love him. <laughs> I'm <laughs> supposed to ask of him to deliver right. on his manifesto. Love thy neighbor. As you does like the yourself. president love his neighbor? He doesn't? He doesn't. He is best his neighbor. UCZ is his neighbor. Does the president love the poor man in Kalikiliki? I've not seen him in Kalikiliki. I've so not seen him in Chibolia. Does the president love that child in UTH? Have you seen my president, uh, since he became president of the Republic of Zambia, visit a hospital to see how the children are there? I mean, look, uh, you see, as a leader, you have to have the power of discernment. Uh, these people, of brothers who have called, they are showing frustration. They want me to sit here as a praise singer. They, they're questioning say, yeah. say, you're harboring too much hate. No, I, I don't hate. I have no space for hatred. He's my young brother. He's my president. Then here's but one of the uh, callers to say, talk, talk to your young brother. Talk, talk to him. Here is how it is done. Let me tell you something. We were at church at a uh, burial of um, uh, my late brother, uh, Dr. Mpande, mm -hmm. uh, Chief Mpande, at St. Ignatius. The president was there, and the way I know government uh, protocol, before the presidency comes into the sanctuary, mm -hmm. they would obviously brief him on who is in the church. So I take it that he knew that I was in the church, and I was sitting an opposite aisle. When he was standing up, he greeted this aisle, this aisle, and he conveniently avoided my eye to go and uh, greet someone else. Well, he touched. is the one... <laughs> Who hates that woman to the core? You understand? Right. And the one young person remarked, he says, you politicians, even in church, you can't greet each other. This is a young person. Now, uh, for the president, it, it only has to take him to reach out. And I said this on another platform. Someone says, no, why don't you reach out to the president? I mean, I'm not the president. Can I go to King Pharaoh and say, I want to see you? No. What I say is not hateful. I am saying, let us work out programs that develop our country. And I emphasize on agriculture. On this forum, I have informed the nation on how best we can run agriculture. Yes. I have said, and I want to repeat, that there's going to be extreme hunger this year. Starting from June, there will be extreme hunger. And uh, I've advised that, uh, I advised, I think, uh, just before January, that the Consumers Development Fund should be used to buy seed, fertilizer, and go to areas where it's raining and get people to plant. Because that's the only source of money which, uh, where I'm seeking, sitting, I could see. 
They don't get those advices. So when he says frustrated, frustrated to the point where I can see where we're going, we're going to have hunger. My advice at this point in time is that the president should call in the Zambia National Farmers Union and talk to the commercial farmers with center pivots and do the following things. One, tell commercial farmers that anyone who grows winter maize will get electricity free. They will be given fertilizer by government. And uh, look, then this maize can be sold back to government. You understand? Right. That's a way to mitigate the hunger that is forthcoming. That's the only solution at this point in time. You hear ministers say, no, you can eat rice, you can eat uh, what? Even candolo and candolo, anything. Uh, we have you know, Zambia ni kabwadi. Zambia ni eat in shima even with wondwe. They won't complain. So when we talk like this, we some of us get the fear ahead of us that we could easily be a failed state when hunger rooms. 1987 riots against the UNIP government were about mini meal. Yes. The mini meal price was 12 kwacha then. We said, even when he reduced it to three kwacha, we said, no, you are outgoing. What happened in 1987? You see, we have been at peace, and this lack of foresight, lack of discernment, which they are saying that he is anti-president, I have to, there's got to be someone who has to tell it to him the way it is. This business of saying things because you want to be loved, you want to be called politically correct, that's what is destroying us. There's got to be one soul in this country who has to say, Mr. President, what you're doing is wrong. Besting uh, uh, UCZ is wrong from A to Z. I think the, 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 the So <clears throat> uh, uh, just having a one-sided uh, corruption campaign is wrong. Be in the middle. You are the umpire. Be in the middle. Madam President, there's, there's so many calls buzzing, but uh, l let me make, make mention of one aspect i think we talked about your relationship and the republican president but uh, also the relationship of uh, president hh and the former republican president dr ecl has been a debate that so many people have been a part of it uh you know countrywide how have you looked at their relationship and uh looking at where we're coming from just i think a few months prior to the 2021 general election this is the man the former president that said how do you look at you know these two presidents working together and how have you looked at uh, uh, his relation president uh, you know H H charging towards president Lungu when he was uh, holding a luncheon for the abolishment of the death penalty and the criminal defamation of the president he invited him at state house the president didn't show up uh, you know what uh... You say my relationship with the presidency and his with the others. You can pick one million people. Mm -hmm. uh, his relationship with uh, the Archbishop of Lusaka is not very... Uh, Cordial, yeah. Yeah, you understand. Mm -hmm. So you can pick four people and say the relationship with the Nawaku, the relationship with this one, uh, and you pick four or five, you find that they, it's all linking to the presidency. So there must be something with this person. You get my point? Oh, stop saying yeah, like that. No, yeah, just, just uh, intellectually, let's think about it. If me, I'm fighting with you, Mr. Mwemba, and my brother and my sister, there must be something with me. It calls for reflection on one person. He's a leader. He's the one with the power. And he's the one who has to put the children together. Mind you, he could be my young brother, but in essence, he's my leader. He's my father. You understand that? Mm -hmm. He is the head of the household called Zambia. And it's up to him to put the children together. Um, if someone did me bad, I can't carry that uh, issue in future, even when God has favored me with the leadership. He needed to show a different style of leadership from what he had experienced. You understand? Right. 
I was in Is prison. that a confirmation he had a bad experience? Of course. He was in jail. That's not uh, mean. That's not mean. You can't take it away from him. It's not a good experience. It's not something that should have happened to him. That's my opinion. Why? But do you carry that to the grave? Do you show forgiveness? Do you show a different style? No. When people say, help him is your brother, how do I help him other than through this platform? We had the other leaders who would call opposition together. There would be sessions just for opposition. What is it? How am I doing? You understand that? Does this person have time? You are invited at the state house. You are at a table, and the host is the greeted everyone except the opposition table. Do you want to be there again? Did that happen to you? <laughs> no, I have not shown up, but others who went there related how the host never even passed by their table. I, Look, I, maybe he was busy, let's give him the benefit of doubt, oh, yeah. but it doesn't happen, because on your priority list of who you have invited, you know, oh, my colleagues are there. And this is a moment to mingle with colleagues. You understand that? Right. Uh, in other countries like Botswana, you find the president and the opposition leader even uh, having tea together, exchanging notes. That's normal. You are only uh, uh, seen on a platform in parliament debating against each other. After that, you're friends. So uh, the point I'm raising is, uh, you know, uh, and uh, for me, the, you, you heard the adjective they, they use. You don't love him. I mean, why? Because I'm a woman, you use L-O-V-E, the four-letter word. You could have used L-I-K-E. <laughs> I don't like him. I don't love him. You see? They say, because we're to invest together and he was supposed to be my husband. Where? <laughs> this is UPND agenda, where they want to portray me that I'm not a leader but a woman. That's, that's, that's why, how they, they coin their thinking. But this is not the issue. The issue we are here for is how can we move our country from this yoke of, um, you know, where we think as a nation we are not important. All right. Madam President, this number has been calling, and apparently this is the last call we're picking up due to time. Hello? Hello? Yes, good morning, sir. You've got uh, 60 seconds. Tell us your name. It's Gilbert. I'm calling from Kaputa. I'm 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 from Kaputa. i am
the viewers we cannot uh, take up any more phone calls but uh, as you uh, as we end uh, even getting on what uh, what Gilbert has said madam president with how president HH and his entire government is governing are there any sectors that you could be able to commend as an opposition and also condemn and give alternatives to how they're running the government we can we can end on that now I think, uh, let's put it this way. Uh, first, it appears that their manifesto is flawed. They've abandoned it. And they never had a very substantive manifesto. They were picking from different places. And uh, these ideas of uh, free education, uh, where you pack a classroom without uh, uh, resources, that's not free education at all. Because we are beneficiaries of free education. We walk in, there's a ruler, there's a pencil, the teacher is resourced. Mm -hmm. But where you walk into a classroom and find that uh, there are 200 children to one teacher on the same salary, and there's no option, the, the education system is being dragged back to pre-independence days. So w when you look at the composition of his cabinet, I always wonder whether they have the same interactions we used to have as cabinet ministers. Because during my time, as minister of energy, I was minister of agriculture or minister of finance. <laughs> you took the lead in directing cabinet on what to do. The president is just a chairperson of cabinet. You go and present your ideas. This is what I want to do. This is where we want to go. And your friends debate the pros and cons of what you are suggesting. From what I gather, when they go to cabinet, the president says, oh, we are going to do this, this, this. He's a chair, he's also the minister. So the other see fought back. You could have a very, very intelligent cabinet, but in the presence of President Hagainde, you can't perform. Because of the same issue I started with, that even in the region, he, f he thinks that he's Mr. Superman, he's, he's got a monopoly of knowledge, and he, he has to do things his way. For example, I have said, Listen, uh, they, 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 they're going to collect books and interviewing uh, UCZ is a bad idea. You, know, you call it my feeling, but that's a feeling of every congregant in UCZ. So what does that do? It divides the nation. It could be a noble cause on his behalf, but you weigh the pros and cons. What are the benefits? The benefits are negative to the nation. And therefore, you are not going to be like, Maka, like Ahab, who 400 prophets. And I like this interaction where you get more UPND calling. When I sit back here, I said, yeah, that's the Makaya's court. Everyone will, will, will deride what you're saying. Makaya said to Ahab, you're going to war. You say you're going to bring the head of that Philistine. You find me, as long as my Lord has not said it. Mm -hmm. And what happened to Mahab? They brought his head. Makaya was in court and he was in jail, and he had to be released. That was one out of 400. That was 401 prophets. Only one prophet was right. Don't go to war. You're going to die. He says, what can he, uh, Makaya say? Has he ever said anything good? This is exactly what is repeating itself here. Has Nawaku ever said anything good about HH? I've said everything good. I did say in the Kalomo issues that you can't go to a farm where somebody is laid and stand on that farm and that spirit of that person lies still. All these are issues for atonement. Oh. We need to atone. We need to forgive each other. We need to accept our mistakes humble ourselves before God and move the country forward. I want him to succeed right. because the next president needs to take from a position 
of success. Which could be you? Could it, could yes, yes, I mean, uh, I, I take it from you. I hope you've prayed about it. <laughs> <laughs> if the Zambians people uh, give you the mandate, well, it's not our entire. I hope I won't be another Ahab. All right. Well, I'm first, it's been a pleasure having you for today's edition of the Sunrise Breakfast. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you, viewers, and thank you, callers. Your calls are very, very important, negative or positive. Negative in my perspective, but what you're saying, mm -hmm. we don't discount what you're saying. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. To our viewers and the callers, once again, we appreciate and thank you so much for having joined us. We've been looking at the state of affairs. Our guest has been the FTD president, Madam Edith Nawakwe. Thank you so much. Once again, this has been Keith Mwemba on behalf of the production team at Movie Television. Like wasn't always, it's One Zambia, One Nation. Good morning. Welcome to MCT.